In this tutorial, I will show you how to write a ROS2 parameter callback with C++. And we are going to start with this node. So in this node, we do nothing really. We just uh, have three parameters. All right, so for each parameter, you need to first declare it so that the parameter can exist within the node. And then you need to get the value with get parameter. So you declare the parameter name, you get the value, and you put this inside here, as you can see, a class attribute. On top of that, you can also set some default values, just as I've done here. So here you can see with a string, with an integer, and with a boolean. But now if you have just this code, so then you're going to set the parameters at runtime, okay, with the command line or from a launch file. But after that, if you want to set, if you change a parameter while the node is running, while the node is spinning, then nothing is going to happen. And so to be able to handle new parameters values in your code, you will need to add a parameter callback. And let's directly write a parameter callback. So we will first write the callback and then register the callback in the constructor here. Okay, I'm going to put this as a private maybe. Okay, because that's something you're not going to use outside of the class anyway. And so let's do a parameter callback. So what uh, actually, what is the data type that we need to return from the parameter callback? Well, the data type is a set parameters result that you first need to include here. Okay, so you need to include with include from RCL interfaces slash msg slash set parameters result dot I'm going to take the HPP. All right, so you're going to basically need to return a message from the parameter callback. So I'm going to write the parameter callback here with RCL interfaces and then msg and then set parameters result. All right. You can use the auto completion here. If you are on VS Code, well, to get the auto completion, if you don't have this, you just go to the extensions here on the left and make sure that you have the ROS extension, okay, that is installed. So the one from Microsoft, okay, you just install it. You might need to reload VS Code, but then it should work. So don't forget to also save the file and it should uh, correctly work. Just gonna put that on the side. Right, and so we have our return type. Let's name this params callback. And what do we get inside uh, the parameter callback? So what is the argument here? Well, we are going to get a const and then a vector. So that's going to be an std vector of RCL CPP parameter. Okay, and we actually get a const reference to uh, those I'm just gonna put params here all right so a list basically a list of parameters so make sure you use the exact same syntax okay with C++ uh, syntax with ROS sometimes it's a lot of things you can see but make sure that you use the correct syntax with const reference and here std vector of rclcpp parameter and let's actually open and close this so we have the function here and of course because we have this, we need to return something. So let's just return. So let's create a message because that's actually a message. RCL interfaces msg set parameter result. Let's create result here, just like that. And let's do result dot. So you can see we have two things. We have successful and reason. Okay, so successful is gonna be a Boolean flag. So let's put it to true for now. And then let's do result dot reason. Let's put okay. Or oh, let's put success. Okay, I guess the reason would be more useful if uh, the success is false, so that you can exactly say what happened in the callback. And then return result. All right, so we have the minimal code for the callback. We still haven't processed the parameters in the callback yet. Let's actually finish this by registering the callback because now it's not going to be called. So let's register it. And to register the callback, you simply need to do this add on set parameters callback. So you have this function here. And then in order to bind the callback here to the class, you will need to use the std bind. So std bind. And in std bind, you put the reference to this function here. So you need to put this 
ampersand and then the name of the class. So test params callback, params callback here. So name of the class, the name of the function. In the bind, we also need to put this, this keyword, which is this node that we want to bind to, and then a placeholder because we have one argument. So std placeholders, let's put underscore one. All right, and like this, actually, Let's go back to a new line with this. And that's not all because well, we are going to keep this, uh, we are going to create a callback handle, okay, as a class attribute so we can, uh, well, we can keep the object for that. So I'm just gonna add here an on, so that's called on set parameters callback handle, right? It's quite complicated syntax, but just need to remember this uh, and just write it when you need it shared pointer and then callback uh, let's call it param params callback handle and let's just do params callback handle like that is equal to and let's create this all right so we save the we save the result we save the handle that we get with this function here all right, so that's how you create a parameter callback with C++. You first write this, so you create a param callback handle, and then you do this add on set parameters callback. You bind the function with the parameters callback. You receive a vector of parameters, and then you need to return a set parameters result. And now, well, let's actually process the parameters that we have received. So let's do that here. Actually, I'm gonna do that right here, okay? I just first create the result. I set it to true by default, and then I return it at the end. But let's say that if we have any error here in the meantime, I can also change that, okay? So let's keep it true by default and change it only if we have an issue. And so I'm gonna do a for loop here. So for, let's use const and then auto param, uh, like this with a reference parameters, so params. All right, so auto is gonna be, as you can see, an RCL CVP parameter. All right, we have the std vector of parameters, and then we get a const reference to each element of the list. And what do we get from uh, the, the each param? Well, we can get, so let's do param dot, we have get name, okay? We have get name like this, just gonna write them uh, one by one, and then param dot get type and param dot, and then you will get the value. But to get the value, you will not do get value. You will do as bool, for example, as double, as in. So let's say that you want to receive, you know that this parameter is an integer, you will put as int like this, and you will get an integer. Or you will do as double, etc., etc. All right, so let's do an example. Let's say that you want to check for the control loop frequency. So for each param that you receive, you might do a if and then param dot get name, okay? If this is equal to, well, let's say control loop frequency here, then you know that you have this parameter and you know you can process this parameter. And so let's do actually control. So we have the control loop frequency here. Control loop frequency is equal to param dot get, actually not get, but as int. Okay, this is an integer, so we would need to receive an integer. If you wanted a double, you would put 0 0.0 like this, for example. All right, and for each parameter, you can do if param dot get name is equal to another name, and then you just set the value, all right? So what you do in the parameter callback, as you can see, is quite simple. You just do a for loop to go through all of the elements in the vector, in the list, and then you just check the name to see what parameter you got, and then depending on that, you can update the value in the code. And then, well, to update the value in the code, well, in this case, I just update a class attribute, but maybe you will also need to do an action. For example, if you update the motor device port here, 
well, you will need to maybe disconnect and reconnect uh, with the motor. So this is going to take some time. And should you do it in the parameter callback? Well, no, because in the parameter callback, you should go as fast as possible. OK, you don't want to make this callback uh, take too long. So what you can do instead of just disconnecting and reconnecting with the motor here, you can set a flag somewhere, like a Boolean flag, and in another thread, so you will run another thread, for example, to make uh, the communication with the motor, then in this other thread, you will be able to disconnect and reconnect, all right? So if you have an action to do in the parameter callback, don't do it here, but do it in a separate thread. Okay, so now you know how to update parameters from the parameter callback, but let's just also see how you can validate the data. Because, well, maybe the here, if we look at the control loop frequency, Maybe you want, well, first you want a frequency that's a positive number. You don't want to receive minus five and just update your code with minus five. And maybe you want a maximum. Let's say you want the control loop to be not more than, uh, let's say, 100 hertz. So in this case, you will need to make sure that you, well, that you get the correct value here. And not just the value, but also the type. Because if I send a string or a Boolean instead, you don't want to update this to be a string or a boolean. Anyway, that's going to fail in the code. All right, so you need to check both the type and the uh, data that you receive. And for the type, actually, you don't really need to do it because as soon as you set a value for a parameter, then the type will also be set and you can't modify the type afterwards. So if I run here, I'm just going to run my node. So I have built it again. I'm just going to run my node. and I can do ROS2 param list to see that I have my, so I haven't put any parameters here, which means I'm using the default parameters. And in this terminal, I do ROS2 param list. I can see my parameters. So the ones that I have set here, control loop frequency, motor device port, and simulation mode. And let's do a ROS2 param get with uh, control the frequency to see that it is an integer value that is 100. Okay. Now let's try to set this value. So I'm going to do ROS2 param. Let's put it a bit bigger here. Set with the name of the node, the name of the parameter. Let's try to make it at 76. Well, you can see set parameter successful, etc. We are changing it in the code. All is working well. But now let's say I put 76.8. Let's see what happens. You see, we have a setting parameter failed. Okay, wrong parameter type. Okay, it should be integer and we receive a double. And I can try with, let's say, put hello. Okay, you can see we will receive a string that's not allowed. And let's put true. We receive a Boolean that's not allowed. So you can be sure that when you get to this parameter callback, the type for the parameter is already correct. Okay, so you have checked the name. Okay, you know the type is correct. Then you just need to check the value. To check the value, let's just simply do the if here. If param dot as int, let's say is greater or equal than zero, or maybe just greater. And let's do end param dot as int lower than 100 so lower or equal this time so basically we only accept the value so let's put this here we only accept the value if it is between 0 and 100 in this case what well, we just do the class attribute is equal to param dot as int but if not let's add an else here if not what we can do is just modify the result. So we are not going to update the class attribute. And let's modify the result. Result dot successful is false. And then result dot reason is, for example, control loop frequency must be between 0, uh, just like that, 0, 100. And semicolon here. And then we return the result. Okay, so this is just for one parameter. Uh, maybe you could just return 
the result here so that you don't process the following param parameters if you have different if well it depends you do whatever you want here okay so i'm going to save this and now i'm going to go back to here the terminal I'm just going to build it again so my workspace is here and i'm just going to build it and source okay so i can run it again all right so nothing's happening here but let's actually set a new value so let's do set with so let's put a correct value okay so a correct value would be an integer between 0 and 100 so let's put 50 and you can see set parameter successful all right but now let's put so let's put still a integer but let's put 500 and you can see setting parameter failed control loop frequency must be between 0 and 100 okay so in this case the type is correct so it is an integer so we reach the parameter callback but in the parameter callback we don't accept the value thank you for watching now subscribe here to get more tutorials in the future also check out my online courses if you like what i teach links in the description and see you in the next one